How much did it affect? We, we talk about this a lot when guys get into foul trouble with Jarrell, but with Wesley gone for the last 1240 in the first half, did that contribute to kind of the way you guys you know, struggled up until the last point there in the first half? Well, we always like Wes uh, to be on the floor. He probably touches the ball more than any player on our team just because of what he does perimeter-wise and then when he's playing inside. I don't know that we were very fluid offensively. I think we had seven turnovers in the first half, and I told our guys at halftime, uh, all those seven turnovers were, were uh, me. It wasn't those guys. Uh, they haven't touched the ball. Um, so I, I, I'll handle that. But like I told our guys, um, we, we haven't practiced anything offensively since Villanova, and we shot 52% from the, from the field, and we shot 74% from the free throw line. We out-rebounded our opponent by one, and we made more free throws than our opponent attempted. Uh, and I, I think we had 34 points in the paint. I don't know how many paint touches we had, but our goal is to have 42 paint touches per game at 57%. So if we scored 34 points in the paint, we definitely met our goal from a paint touch perspective. And that's uh, further evidence that our, our problems, our issues uh, will never be offensive. They'll always be defensive. And so not having Wes in, though, to answer your question specifically, definitely changes uh, the fluidity of our team offensively. Obviously, you're coming off the win here a couple of minutes ago. But will, the way you guys play defensively, will you allow these guys to get back and work on some offensive stuff in practice leading up to the scene hall? Or I'll have to pray like about it. Okay. I'm not sure. Because uh, Seton Hall is um, very potent offensively. They play six and a half guys, which, to be honest with you, is about what we play. And uh, they match up with us from the perimeter. And everybody talks about their weaknesses, their post. And against uh, Hashim to beat, John Garcia had 23 points and I think 14 rebounds and six blocks. And he plays on one leg. Uh, you have to admire his toughness. But they're a different team uh, as far as their complexion. And uh, we'll have to have an edge to us defensively in order to have a chance on Tuesday. Was Jarrell and Dominique combined for 13 assists? Can you talk about the selflessness of the seniors? What about um, when I think – I don't know if it was a scrum or if it was an offensive rebound. It had to have been a scrum. And we kicked it ahead to Neek. And they're heading opposite of our bench. And Neek hands it off to Rell. That, that's, uh, that's the way you have to play. And I think when you have guys like that that have that sort of character, uh, I think God smiles on you. And, uh, yeah, they're, they're selfless. They're selfless, and I thought that they played, they played really well tonight. Thank you, Buzz. Coach, you, uh, you earlier talked about 35 plus Jimmy, and you also talked about how when West got in foul trouble, that hurt you. How helpful was it to have a player like Jimmy though recently? Yeah. Today, the best thing about Jimmy is he knows exactly what he can do. And rarely do you ever see him get out of it. And you were probably surprised tonight when he dribbled twice and shot a pull-up jumper. But he does that every day in practice. Jimmy's either on the white team, uh, which is the second team every day, and then when we do anything live, uh, I'll put him with the blue team. So it's our starting five plus Jimmy. And then – I'm subbing Jimmy in the same manner that I do during the game. He's really created a niche, and he's created great trust in his teammates. And what he's been able to do is 45 or 54.6% of the time when he gets an offensive rebound, it either leads to a putback or it leads to two free throws. And uh, he shoots the ball well from the free throw line. What's happened, though, is we really need him from a rebounding perspective now. Because per minute played, uh, he's our leading rebounder. Him and Czar, and uh, both of them are about the same height. I actually think Jimmy may be a half inch bigger, but he's really he's he has a distinct role and a distinct niche on our team. That as games continue to progress and practices continue to progress, he continues to get better at it. Probably not. You know, uh, I signed Jimmy. Uh, I was hired on April the eighth. Uh, the signing period uh, started on April the 15th. We signed Jimmy on April the 15th without a visit. I would never called him. Uh, we turned in all his paperwork to Danielle, our compliance director. She said, Coach, I need all the times you've called him. I said, I've never called him. Um, I like guys like that. Uh, guys that jump in with both feet and have trust the way that he does. And uh, Jimmy, Jimmy comes from a lot of things that he's over, had to overcome that nobody even on our team understands. And I'm really thankful for how he's playing because from a confidence standpoint, not only as a player but as a person, it's been really good for the future of his life.
Better for Buzz? Do you have something, CJ? I just want to know why that timeout after the guard is Because we were supposed to be in a ball screen coverage the first possession, and Dwight was wrong. And we had spent 65% of halftime talking about how, what ball screen coverage we're going to be in, and the first possession he didn't run it. And I don't like burning timeouts like that, but we got to get better at defending ball screens.